It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Two outstanding middle schools here playing our game today. One of whom will go on to play Thomas Pullen to make its way to this year's semifinals. Welcome to a new year of Science Bowl. Let's meet today's teams. First from Akakik Academy, which is say hello to Jacqueline Dionis, Matthew McKilla, and David King. And from Nicholas Orr Middle School, here they are, Stan Amuzu. David Sanchez, and Michael Blackwell. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty. With the easier questions on the left, worth five and 10 points. Tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers into these two rounds today. One of these two outstanding teams will come back to play Thomas Pullen for the chance to move on in our competition. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly. Let's go to the red team. And Matthew, would you try that buzzer for me? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, to David and to Jacqueline. And David on Nicholas Orem's team, would you try the green buzzer? It looks and sounds very good. Good luck to Stan, David, and Michael. You guys ready? Yeah, come on, we gotta get fired up here today. No matter what happens, you've won. Because your school said, you're gonna be our representatives. You're the elite folks. When people look at Nicholas Orman and Akakik, you are the poster boys and girls, and you, we couldn't have chosen better. So just have a great time. We go alphabetically A before N, so Akakik, Matthew, let's play that game. May we have Zoo Parade for 15? Zoo Parade for 15 points. To start out, we have a visual question. Team, some of the grade B horror movies that have been appearing on cable recently include this one starring a piranaconda. The piranaconda is a mix of a piranha and an anaconda. In scientific terms, when you breed two species together, you form a what? Matthew. A hybrid? A hybrid. It is indeed a very strange hybrid. All right, go again, Rid. May we have Zoo Parade for 10? Zoo Parade for 10 points. Teams, although crocodiles and beavers and seals don't lay eggs in water because they live partly on land and partly on water, they are like toads and newts and salamanders in being called these. Matthew? Amphibians? Yeah, they are, in some sense of the word, amphibians. Absolutely right. Good. Go red. Zoo Parade for 20. Zoo Parade for 20 points is a multiple choice question. Teams, a newly discovered herbivorous dinosaur has been given the name Ornithischia because it has a spiked tail, a large sail, or a prominent beak. Ornithischia, there's a clue in that game, in that name. No one wants to try. David. The spiked tail, the large sail, or the prominent beak? The sail. Not the sail. Akakik, any idea? Oh, the spiked tail? Ornithischia comes from ornithology, which is the study of birds. So Ornithischia has a prominent beak. No points, good try, go red. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points, teams. The Food and Drug Administration has recently approved an inhalable version of this hormone that diabetics have to take every day. Nicholas Orem. I passed the, the answer Mike. to Michael. 
Insulin? Insulin, you got that right. Yes, instead of injectable, this is inhalable. Certainly less painful and probably easier for diabetics. Thank you, Mike. Go green. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, apparently Caesar was not much of a fan of astrology because he famously said, Brutus, the fault is not in these celestial objects. They are, it is in ourselves. Stars? Stars. The fault is not in our stars. It is in ourselves. Absolutely right. Good. 80 points now for Orem. 75 for Akakik. Almost a dead heat. David, go. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, if you ride roller coasters a lot, chances are you're going to get sick. You get sick because what forces are acting on your body? <laughs> Nicholas Orem. What kind of forces? Gravity. Gravity, G-forces, absolutely right. They can really mess up your insides, but we go back again and again. We just, we just can't get enough of it. Go green. Green things for 15. Green things, 15 points, teams. Your question is as follows. Two-part answer. A century plant is called a century plant because it does what, how often? Come on, Nicholas Orm. What, how often this century plant? I pass it down to Michael. Michael. Because it reproduces very often? Not quite, not quite. A century plant is so named because it does what, how often? Reproduces every century. Absolutely right, every hundred years. Good answer, good. Thank you, David, for your assist. Go red. Yes, sir. Science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, a multiple choice question and a visual question. Look at the monitor. Oh, what a beautiful car this was. A big Plymouth back in the 1950s. Like a lot of cars back then, it had fins. But if this car were a fish, would those fins be dorsal fins, ventral fins, or caudal fins? David, which one? When dorsal fins? No, not the dorsal fins. These fins on that car, if this car were a fish, would they be dorsal, ventral, or caudal? You had a chance to think about it. What do you want to tell me? Ventral. Caudal. Caudal is the one at the posterior. Try again, red. Let's go. Tie score still 90 all. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, recently, people all over Washington were zacking, including politicians, all in honor of Joshua, excuse me, Zach Letterer, the manager of the University of Maryland basketball team who had brain cancer and every time he came out of chemotherapy, he would flex what muscles? Akakik? Biceps. Biceps, yes, he was doing this after each one so people all over Washington were zacking in honor of Zach Letterer. All right, the buzzer is rung. We've come to the end of the first round. Score, Akakik 100, Nicholas Orm 90. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't you go away. I wanted to start a business that I was passionate about, something I absolutely enjoyed and believed in. I was doing the corporate grinds and I kind of wanted to do something a little more green. My name's Steve Allen. I run Rad Cab in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We do pedicabs and mobile outdoor advertising. I love being social, talking to people. A lot of confusing stuff when you start a business. When I go in and talk to my store mentor, he really helps me sort it all out, and we just get organized. And when I go home, I feel confident about what's going on. It really feels amazing to create jobs here in my city. It's incredibly awesome. I love to show it off. If you get a solid foundation for your business laid, everything else falls in place. SCORE has absolutely been the most invaluable resource that I've had from day one. For free? I could not imagine doing anything else. Get your free business mentor at SCORE.org. Welcome back to Science Bowl. Thanks for being with us today. Two outstanding schools here playing our game, one of whom will be moving on in our competition. Let's find out about our players. Let's go first to Akakik Academy, way down in the southern portion of Prince George's County. It's worth the trip, though, isn't it, Matthew, to go all the way down there. Tell us about your school. Who's your principal? 
Uh, our principal is Miss Judy Adams. Absolutely, and boy, she is so much behind you. I know that uh, you feel her support. And the sponsor of your team, Ms. Shonda Wooden, has been sending teams here since 2007. She's just an amazing teacher. She's really here to make sure that you guys have a great education and, and as many opportunities as you can have, and we really appreciate all that she does. Uh, any alternates on your team? Yes, Marissa Miles. Wonderful. We'll bring her out with Miss Wooden in just a few moments. Uh, tell me about Aki Geek Academy. Why is it so great? Well, we have a tag. We have a tag program, so we're always. If you're in the tag program, you're ahead of your grade level, so it it really helps for high school. Wow. So you're really prepared for that next step. And uh, tell me about yourself, Matthew. What do you like to do in your spare time? Well, I like to swim, ice skate, and really read. Read. And someday, what do you aspire to do? Be civil engineer. Yeah. And you've got, uh, you got a lot of potentials, a lot of potential out there because you have a lot of interests, and that's a good thing to have at this stage in your life. You're playing a good game, and nice to have you back again, too. This young man has been here before on our show. David, this is your first time, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, you're an eighth grader. Matthew and Jacqueline are seventh graders. And David, you have your eyes on the Air Force, and you're good mechanically, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so you'd like to help fix those planes. Mm -hmm. So when they land on that aircraft carrier, you're out there doing all that maintenance so they can take off again. So that's a high-powered life you got in store yes. for you, huh? Yeah, and I can see you can't wait to get there. What else do you do in your spare time if um, you're not tinkering? I train for the swim meets and I play soccer with my friends. What's your best uh, swimming stroke? Butterfly. Butterfly, yeah. And you swim in Southeast DC, is that yeah. it? Yeah. How long have you been swimming? Since I was eight. Wow, great exercise. Yes. Perfect, just perfect. Good to have you on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Jacqueline, young lady, if you go to the Verizon Center, uh, you might hear some good music. Maybe not there, but you sing with a choir yes. that's associated with the WNBA. Is that right? No, well, it's um, Washington Performing Arts oh, Society, okay. yes. And yeah. um, I'm in the Children of the Gospel Choir. Wow. Yes. And how long have you done that? Um, this would be my third year. Third year. Yes. So you're used to performing. Yes. Yes, and you have a great stage presence mm -hmm. and you have a wonderful smile. I can just see <laughs> why you. they would choose you. And obviously you have a great voice. What else do you do? Um, well, I like to sing, um, play basketball. Um, I like to go swimming mm -hmm. and just do a lot of different athletic things. And yeah. those are basically all my hobbies. And we were talking before the show about how being in shape helps you to do all those things you want to do. And you, you practice that every day. Yes. You want to be a professional singer someday. Yes. I can see you being successful. We'll <laughs> buy your you. albums. <laughs> Nicholas Sorum, nice to have you here today. David, welcome back. This young man played for Cesar Chavez Elementary School, and now you're here with Nicholas Orm, Orm uh, Middle School. And uh, real pleasure to have you here again, David. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're a great player. Tell us about Nicholas Orm. It's over there uh, in Hyattsville, across from the mall at Prince George's. Yes, that's correct. And uh, who's your principal? Miss Maryfield. Wonderful. And you have not one, but two sponsors. Who are they? Miss Rankin and Miss Odell. And they're so enthused. I see them running around here and they couldn't wait to get you here today and we appreciate all that they do because this wouldn't happen without sponsors who cared about our young people. So thank you both. We'll bring you out in just a few moments. David, tell me about Nicholas Orm. What do you really like about the school? Well, I like that that we have like lots of like science related um, like extracurricular science activities like um, Science Olympiad, Science Bowl, and I think we're going to have STEM Academy. Yeah, that's just great. So if you're a science-oriented person, you're in the right place if you're at Nicholas Orm. David, what do you want to do someday? Well, I want to be a pediatrician because like, I like working with kids and um, like, like being, being someone that helps like medically. It always interests me. Well, that's just great. Uh, everybody should have that same ambition that you do to make the world a better place. And uh, I, I can see you being successful. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I play Pokemon, but if, like, if I have my friends over, I usually like play soccer. That's great. All right. Scholar athlete over there. That's great. Michael, you've come up with a lot of clutch answers already. How do you know so much about science? Well, I don't know. I like to do research in my spare time when I'm not reading or writing. And I know you like to read, you like to write, and you want to be a famous author. Yeah. You'd like to follow in the footsteps. Who is your favorite author, if you have one? Rick Riordan. Yeah? What, does, uh, what kind of books does he write? Um, here with the Percy Jackson series and a lot of best-selling books. That's wonderful. So have you tried your hand at writing already? Yeah. Yeah? All right. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And uh, uh, you never want to let it go. 
you always want to go back and edit and change it. You know, you always yeah. want to keep making it more and more perfect. Nice to have you with us, Michael. Stan, a uh, young man who wants to be a football player. Yes. Favorite team is the Ravens. Uh, favorite player? Um, I don't have a favorite player right now. Okay. All right. And uh, you play football in your neighborhood, do you? Yes. Yeah, that's great. And you wanted to be on this show because you told me you like science, right? Yes. Is that your favorite subject? Yes. That's great. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of the game. Almost a dead heat here. 100 for Akakik, 90 for Nicholas Orm. Lots of points to give away. Last correct answer came from Red Team. So, Matthew, start us out. May we have Zoo Parade for 25? You may. Zoo Parade for 20. The big one in that category teams, J.W. Hastings. Is the scientist credited with discovering how certain microorganisms and bacteria and fireflies produced cold light? Cold light is a phenomenon known as this. Bioluminescence. Bioluminescence. Try again, red. May we have green things for 10? Green things for 10 points. Teams, the hard fibrous substance that makes up the trunk and the branches of a tree is the same substance that Geppetto used to make Pinocchio. What is it, Nicholas Orm? Wood. Wood, the wooden boy. Yes, indeed. Go, green. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Team's question is as follows. Team's, a radio telescope is something of a misnomer because it detects radio waves, but they are not sound waves. They're wavelengths of this form of energy. The Matthew. Spec the invisible spectrum of light. Light, absolutely right. Good answer, Matthew. Good. Red. Body systems for 20. Body systems, 20 points. Teams, put your thinking caps, caps on and tell me why does sweat sometimes not work to cool off your body and simply rolls off your face onto the ground? Why doesn't it cool you? Give me a reason why. If the air is saturated, if it's very humid out, the sweat will not evaporate. And if it doesn't evaporate, it won't cool you. It just rolls down and gets in your eyes. So it's an atmospheric condition that determines whether the sweat's going to be effective or not. Try again, Red. May we have Dateline Science for 10? Dateline for 10 points, teams. A deficiency of this vitamin that your skin can produce if you stay out in the sunshine, vitamin David. D. Vitamin D. D, yes, has been linked to dementia and Alzheimer's, which means the more time you spend outside, perhaps the greater, the lesser risk you will have, then of course you risk skin cancer. So you've got to have a nice balance there. Go green. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, astronomers have found a giant hurricane on the planet Saturn that has six sides. What do we call a six-sided shape, Matthew? Hexagon. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Hexagon it is. May we have science potpourri for 20? Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, since scientists think, they guess, that the reason we get allergies is because we live in an environment that is almost germ-free is called scientifically the hygiene what, since it is a guess. What do you call a scientific guess? Hypothesis. Hypothesis, the hygiene hypothesis. Go red. Come on, help each other out. You need to talk a little more to each other. Go. May we have body systems for 25? Body systems for 25, the big one in that category. Team's a big word, but an easy answer. If your doctor determines you have to go to a specialist, and the specialist is known as an otorhinolaryngologist, that specialist is going to look at what three parts of your body, an otorhinolaryngologist. Pick it apart. Three body parts. Come on, David. I passed the answer to Michael. Michael. Um, ear, nose, and throat. You got all three. That's the way to do it. Go. 25 points. Green. Next. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25 points. Teams, if you watch The Simpsons, you know that the baseball team is named for these forms of an atom that have extra neutrons and a different atomic weight but the same atomic number. Isotopes. Nicholas Orr. Isotopes. 
Isotopes? The isotopes, absolutely right, the Springfield isotopes. In fact, the Albuquerque isotopes is a real life team out there in New Mexico. Their mascot is an orbit. Michael, you're making a difference there. 160 to 155, just a five point advantage for Orem. David Pick. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, what astronomical event in slang could be called sunblock? What is sunblock, Matthew? An eclipse. Yeah, an eclipse. You got it. You've read my mind. Go. May we have science potpourri for five? Potpourri for five points, teams. The sequel to Disney's hit Frozen must have Queen Elsa with a temperature of 102 because the sequel is going to be called Frozen What? David. Frozen what? Fire. Not fire. Good try. If Elsa has a temperature of 102, the new movie might be called Frozen what? Fever. That's it. Good. Red. Go. May we have body systems for five? Body systems for five points. Teams, a lot of airline passengers are now taking on board one of these devices that keeps the seat in front from coming back so that a... Matthew? Knee defender. The knee defender, absolutely right. Most people hate it, especially if you are in the front of that person. Red, go. 170 we, to 160. May we have dateline science for 15? Dateline for 15 points. Teams, some paleontologists are calling this thing a prehistoric glockenspiel because these iconic rocks sitting in the middle of England make noise if you hit them. President Obama just visited there. Stonehenge, go red. Come on, talk to each other. Dateline science for five. Dateline for five points, teams. This disease, sometimes known as hemorrhagic fever, is better known as this that is now ravaging West Africa. David. Ebola. Ebola, yes, good, go. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Seems the question is as follows. The pelican flower smells like rotten fish for one very good reason. Why would it emit that odor? David. To attract insects? Yes, attract insects and pollinators. Just what we needed to hear. Good. 185 now to 170. We're down to the last five questions, six questions. Go. R green. Green things for five. Green things for five points, teams. Sometimes when students come on Science Bowl, they're so nervous. They're shaking like these little green solar collectors. They're shaking like a what? David. Leaf. A leaf. That's it. Good. Green. Zoo parade for five. Zoo parade for five points, teams. The newest animals at the National Zoo are Zora and Wilma. They belong to the, uh, a herd of these largest of North America's mammals. Matthew? Elephants? Not elephants, no. They belong to a herd of North America's largest mammals. And they were named by students at Howard and Gallaudet Universities because these big bovines are those school's mascots. Zora and Wilma are what? They're buffaloes. Go green. green David? Things, green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Teams, giant redwoods get 40% of their water from fog because what T initial process isn't strong enough to pull water from the roots all the way up the trunk. T initial. Transpiration. Go again. Three questions left. David? Science will brief for 25. Pope brief for 25 points. Teams, back in the 1960s, NASA formed a group called SETI, S-E-T-I, looking for aliens out there in the universe. S-E-T-I is an acronym that says, search for extraterrestrial what? Intelligence. Try again, Green. Two questions left. You have a 20 point advantage. You gotta jump in here, Aka Kicker. It's all over. David, pick one. Dateline science for 20. Dateline science for 20 points. Teams, back in the late 1800s, this French scientist was criticized for his germ theory. People said it was foolish, but when he went on and showed how you could make milk germ free, 
They reversed their decision. David? I pass the answer to Michael. Michael. Louis Pasteur. You got it. Louis Pasteur it is. Last question of the game, 25 points under dateline. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle believed in the supernatural, but he famously created a detective who was a great scientist who is still read today. Nicholas Orm, who would he be? Sherlock Holmes. He would be Sherlock Holmes, and that means our game is over. Nicholas Orm, you've done it. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't you go away. Going to school pregnant, riding the bus, that was hard. You just have all the stares, and you have all the questions, and even little kids make you nervous just staring at you. When you get pregnant, all the stuff just goes through your mind. Abortion, adoption, keeping him. You're his mom. You're supposed to be the one taking care of him and raising him. But when you're 15 and pregnant, you can't do it without support. I wanted to give him a better life. When I found out I was pregnant, I don't know, just a light hit me in my heart, just saying, adoption, what you need to do. I really have a simple dream. I just want to get my nursing career, get married, and have a family. When I get pregnant again, give them a better life. I'm Miranda, and I chose adoption. Welcome back to Science Bowl. What a great game here today. And it looks like Nicholas Orem is going on to play Thomas Pull in our final tally is Akko Keek 170. Nicholas Orem 235. Congratulations, Stan and David and Michael and Miss Rankin and Miss Odell. I know how proud you are back there. Look at the smiles on their faces. And Paul Ariola, I know you knew a lot of these answers too. Paul, congratulations to you. Let me see some smiles here. Matthew, great game today. David, we loved having you. Jacqueline, she's still smiling. She's going to sing for us no matter what happened here today. Marissa, so nice to have you here today, a seventh grader. And Shonda, you are just the best. A wonderful sponsor, always brings great students here. We loved having you here. We loved having you too. Hope to see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye-bye now.